Hello and welcome back to 100% Real with Rudy. Today I have with me Miss Wan and she's been putting up amazing content lately about just how important it is to stop the endless hamster wheel of diets and diets and diets because something that we both relate to is going into a diet straight after a diet because we didn't realize the importance of maintenance. We didn't realize the importance of actually growing muscle. And I don't know, I'll speak for myself. I can't speak for you, but I remember looking at these really lean, amazing bodies. And like, I want that body. It's, it looked smaller than mine. It probably wasn't, but it looked smaller than mine because it was so defined. It had muscle. It had all this leanness. And I'm like, oh, I have to look, I have to actually slim down to get that look like I need to keep losing fat but what I didn't realize is that they actually were bigger they had more muscle mass they looked smaller they looked leaner because they had built a lot of muscle mass and then she cut it off in one little cycle and then built it again not for six weeks not for 12 weeks think six months think actually putting time into it and this is something that one personally went through and I'm pretty sure she sees a lot of her clients going through the same thing they probably fight you to start with I'm not so sure maybe you could talk about that as well but the longer you spend time dieting the longer you forget about all these things and I know that when I fell into those cycles I fell so in love with this adrenaline high this dopamine of oh my god this is killing me but it feels good so I'm gonna keep doing it and then I think about it and like now now I'm gonna change it tomorrow and I'm like as soon as tomorrow comes oh that felt so good let's go again so I'm gonna hand this over to one and why is it so important that we need to do what like we need to take the risk and do what the body is like crying out for otherwise the alternative is just living a suboptimal life and pretty much struggling exhausted and wondering why we don't see any differences and why we feel like shit (laughs) yeah yeah so I don't think people understand or ladies especially don't understand the importance of proper taking proper time away from dieting phase because people don't understand that dieting is a stressor on the body right? You are not really building muscle. Very small subset of people can truly build muscle and lose fat at the same time. But most of us are beyond that point. So, you know, when you're dieting, you have the stress of dieting, which down regulates your hormones, causes stress, inflammation, affects your biofeedback. You're not really living optimally at that point. So the thing is people stay in this zone, not understanding that they need to bring themselves out of it in order for their bodies to function optimally. So that means actually living at maintenance. So living at maintenance doesn't mean you're there only for a month or two, you know, it means like you actually live there. You think about like, I try to make the analogy of vacations and your home, right? When you go on a vacation, it's short term, you go away for a little bit and then you come back, you come back home and that's where you live. So that's kind of like that dieting should be like those vacations you take away from home. Um, and then you come back home, you live at maintenance. Um, but women have it backwards. They they go and diet thinking that's that's where they should be forever. And then come back home periodically. And that doesn't work that way. And that is why a lot of women are complaining that their bodies aren't changing. They're spinning their wheels um, because, you know, they're just not, you're not, living optimally while you're in a dieting phase why is it so important to actually tune into our biofeedback even more so than even worrying about the stupid scale because we Mm -hmm. get to this loop of okay I feel this way because the scale said this like I I made a little meme thing that was just like oh mighty oracle tell me how I'm gonna feel today and then step on it and it's like yeah it, it, it's like we don't actually tune into our bodies anymore yeah. and lose touch with that. So yeah. why is biofeedback so important and how exactly does that help us? And 
we'll touch on the maintenance bit after that. Yeah. So I, I feel like biofeedback trumps whatever the scale says, because that's really your body talking to you, talking to you, right? So it's you know, things like your digestion, your sleep, your libido, your strength and energy, your mood, a food focus, you know, your menstrual cycle, your hormones, all of those are your, your body's way of talking back to you, telling you how you're feeling. So a lot of times people ignore this, not understanding that, you know, um, poor sleep and high hunger and no libido and losing your menstrual cycle are all signs that your body is under stress. So um, if we can prioritize listening to your biofeedback more, that's kind of guide us to being living a more successful life in general. And that just tells you where you should be. So, um, you know, when you're in a dieting phase, um, when those start to suffer, that is your cue. That's your cue that, you know what, your body's tired and needs to take time away from dieting and then, you know, bring things back up to maintenance, start feeling good again, living life, and then going back into a short-term dedicated fat loss phase again, when the time is right. But what if I still have 10 kilos to lose? Oh yeah, that's, you're right. You bring up a good point. And I, I made a post about that today. I um, saved it. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, regardless of whether you've reached your goal or not, it doesn't matter because I get that question a lot. Well, what if I have 50 pounds to lose? What if I haven't you know, reached my goal? That's okay. And you, you have not failed because you need to end your fat loss phase. You're actually doing yourself a, a favor by getting out of the fat loss phase. So, so no matter whether you reach your goal or not, you end it. You periodize your nutrition. So you have periods of dieting, periods of you know, going back to maintenance living there and then going back into that dedicated fat loss phase. And it can take multiple fat loss building cycles to build that body of yours. It doesn't have to be done in one shot. And that's where people get stuck because they keep dieting uh, forever thinking like, okay, I just need to, when I reach my goal, then I'll stop. But then, you know, a lot of things can happen. Your metabolism will downregulate. Your calories are probably so low that you realistically cannot eat less than a thousand calories and survive properly right um so you have to take periods of time bring it back up to you a new maintenance live there and then go back into a fat loss cycle but you don't get it i've had kids i have all this extra kid weight to lose and i'm like you i i've been trying to do this and it's and, and, and it's just not coming off and i've been doing this for ages I can't just stop now. Like I'm, I'm trying not to eat. I'm eating clean. I'm doing endless cardio. I don't stop with the kids, but I just can't lose this weight. You don't get it. <laughs> it's a cool yeah. thing we hear. Why? Yeah. Is, like, Obviously what you're doing isn't working, right? I mean, it's not working. So we got to do something differently. And obviously is moving, stepping into discomfort, stepping into the thing that you're most afraid to do that you're running away from. That's probably the thing that you need to be doing the most. We women are more comfortable in restriction, they're comfortable dieting, not understanding that there is another way to approach this. And it's usually the thing that you haven't done, right? We have to do things differently if you want a different result. The biggest thing that I do see here is that people have, mostly women, have such a warped view of what it takes to get to where they want to be. And I was there. I thought that the more I did in the gym, the more muscle I was going to grow, the better I was going to look. The Like if I wasn't training, then I was losing my gains. Mm -hmm. I'm very blessed that when I started, I knew that I needed to actually build muscle to get that look, but I wasn't feeding it at the same time. I wasn't doing the things I needed to do yeah. to rest and recover in between. And then I realized and you said this before we started the recording thing is when we did our next fellows phase, we actually looked smaller. We looked worse. Our body didn't change. And like, isn't the whole purpose of doing what you want to do actually getting a body, like the body of your dreams, like actually building that body. You need to like build a toned body. You don't shrink a toned body. So maybe you can talk a little bit more about how important it is to train in a certain way and to feed that training, but also to recover from that training. 
Yeah, I you know a lot of women. I mean, there's I can't speak for all women because there's of course some people that don't don't train hard enough, but um, you know, you've got to train intelligently and properly. And this does include honoring rest days. That is part of the process that people don't understand. It's just as important, if not more, to allow the body to rest and recover um, in that process. So, you know, you gotta fuel your body properly. You gotta train it with intensity. That means pushing your lifts, not being afraid to lift heavy, um, but then also, um, you know, taking those rest days, okay? More is not better. Um, you know, I used to, I, you know, I'll be honest with you. I never was one of those people that trained seven days a week. I actually was uh, quote unquote sensible, sort of. Um, and I trained five days a week. I, two, I took two uh, off days from, from lifting. But the important part of all this also is making sure that you're sleeping enough, right? If it doesn't, I mean, if you're not sleeping in between those rest days, that's just as bad also. Also, you need to be eating enough to support your goals. So a lot of people have the training part down, but they don't have the eating part down. They're not eating enough to support muscle growth. And so there's a disconnect there. And that's super important to make sure that you're fueling your body properly, sleeping enough, training hard, taking rest days. And I think people also don't understand that part of having that toned look that people want is having muscle. So you can't continue to lose fat trying to reveal something that's not even there underneath it. And I get that because I've been there. I know what that's like to constantly be chasing fat loss, thinking that I need to lose fat. Whereas maybe, yeah, maybe I do need to lose fat. I, I give credit, I give, I, um, uh, what do you call it? Acknowledge that, right? But more than anything, you actually need muscle to have that look. And you're not building muscle if you're constantly chasing fat loss. So part of that equation of having that tone look is less fat, but also enough muscle to have that look. So trying to convey that message is really hard. It takes a lot of, you know, it takes people a long time to get to that point, to that realization. But hopefully at that some point when you're spinning your wheels long enough, trying to chase those last five and 10 pounds, realizing that, you know what, maybe it's muscle that I need more than anything. So, yeah. It, this is why it is so important. And like one literally posts the same message over and over again about the fact that fat loss is done in cycles. You've seen me post about it. You've seen me say that, yes, you need a calorie deficit, but that's part number two. Part number one is being in the right place to earn the calorie deficit first. Like oh, yeah. people don't talk about you need to earn things. You need to earn your dieting. You need to earn exercises because sometimes you're not ready for a certain exercise either, unless you want to injure yourself. Why mm -hmm. don't people apply the same thing to the diet? Like if you're at a low already, if you're eating like 1500 calories, maybe you can white knuckle it down to 1300 for a short while. But do you really want to live the rest of your life there? Like, is that really sustainable? Because if anything, you will put on a lot more fat at that because it's not going to be sustainable your body registers it as 1300 calories but in between if you're binge eating if you're overeating every time you do that the body's priming it for fat storage yet your metabolism is running on a 1200 engine what do you expect the result to be do you think you're going to keep losing weight and a lot of the time you don't even realize that these little things are happening like if it's not the binging with the overeating, it's you're spending more time doing jack shit on the couch. Like if you're busting your ass in the gym, this is a really good topic. If you're busting your ass in the gym, doing like two hours of weights, then chucking on an extra 30 minutes of hit or stepper or whatever. And then you're going about the house about the day. Uh, if you are not watching this, I'm walking like a slob. If everything's gone from you being this bubbly person, which I am now because I'm almost on three at 3,000 calories, I'm like bumping around everywhere. Whereas when I was not eating this much, I was just, I can't be bothered doing that. Eh, can't be bothered going downstairs. Yeah. Like yeah. you, your body immediately, without you realizing, start sacrificing all of these things to conserve energy. And yeah. by doing that, which you mentioned in that last post as well, which I am going to paraphrase, 
your metabolism will adapt as your calories drop. Your hormones will downregulate. Now, hormones don't just include your sex hormones. Your thyroid is a hormone. If that goes down, you are not going to be burning fat as well as you should. You are not going to be absorbing nutrients as well as you should. Now, you mentioned this before, and I really, really liked it. And it was the whole gut health, the whole she needed to restore her gut and hormonal issues because gut health is put out there like this some stupid woo-woo shit. Like you don't need your gut powder products that just make you bloody shit fur balls. Like gut health is fixed in the mind. And if you did not listen to my podcast with Sharon, who is one of my clients, you need to go listen to it because she went to all those naturopaths. She went to all of those people that just shoved her on products or told her she needed to this, do this diet, do that diet. And when she came to me, we addressed stress and we put her on not, it wasn't an ex, like an exclusive diet where we were excluding a whole heap of foods. It was just not including foods that she already knew made her a discomfort but it was focusing on stress first which included actually feeding her enough because dieting is a stress on the body we pulled back her training to literally structural stuff it wasn't heavy power lifting heavy bodybuilding stuff because her body was taking a toll for her gut health you need to do less sometimes to get mm-hmm. more results so maybe Absolutely. that's your cue <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, your gut is basically the, you know, I would say the center of your health. Um, So that usually is one of the first things that takes a hit when you're under stress. So yes, if you have any gut issues, um, of course, you got to address any food things that are affecting it. But the main thing is stress, just like you said, stress is huge. And you got to lower that, not only mentally, right, but we're talking about like training stress. People understand that that can also be a stressor on the body. So a lot of times I have ladies coming to me, um, we're, we're addressing those things and I, I'm pulling the training back from five days to two or three days. It really depends on se- the severity and also removing things like hit, spin bike, things like that, that causes stress on the body, just doing walking. Um, if we do, if we do any cardio, it's very, very low intensity. Um, but yes, that's where it's got to start. Um, if you're not addressing that, you might as well just say goodbye to um, trying to restore your gut health. You know, taking a bunch of supplements and not addressing stress is just like trying to pour water in a bucket that has a hole in it. It's you're just not going to go anywhere. And like a lot of people think that you can just slap on a bunch of random supplements and take these all these random probiotics and all of a sudden, you know, things will be great. But no, if you're not addressing stress, um, you're missing a huge component of it. Stress and sleep go so like under they're so underrated like I know when I have shit sleep I really don't feel like doing anything or I do it well actually I I always do what I need to do but I complain the whole way and I'm (laughs) because I'm literally exhausted my brain is exhausted and I'm the person that still pushes myself but the thing is I burn out like a couple of hours into the day and it's like yeah and Think about that. Like if you're burnt out straight, like straight bang, middle of the morning and you do jack shit for the rest of the day, if you're supposed to be in a calorie deficit, you're now in a calorie surplus because you're doing jack shit, you're spending jack little and it's what you do outside of the gym. Yeah, your need. Now, we both talk about this. Patience, all or nothing, immediate gratification. People saying, okay, so... How long's my contract for again? Or so how long are we doing this for again? Or so blah, 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 blah. Like they're always on that yeah. of thought. And it's like, yeah. here's the thing. This is the mindset that has you where you are, frustrated, binging, feeling like shit, feeling like you're never going to get results and having you not even want to put effort in this program because you're just sick of doing the same shit and in the yep. same way so yep I totally agree I think I feel like the ones who are constantly looking at a timeline and constantly asking like how long how much longer do I need to do this when can I start a cut 
I find those are the ones who struggle the most to reach their goals. The ones who are just, you know what, playing the long game, understanding that it's going to take more than, seriously, more than three months. I mean, even six months to a year, it really depends on where they're coming from. Um, the ones who are able to play the long game and delay immediate gratification, those are the ones who are most successful. But the ones who are constantly looking around the corner and asking, when can I start this? How much longer do we need to do this? I, those are the ones that that's almost like a red flag to me that there's still a lot of like mindset issues that we need to work through and managing expectations on how long something's going to take. Because, I mean, let's face it, if you've been you know, doing this, doing this thing that's led you to this point, and it's been going on for two, three years, it's not going to be fixed in just 12 weeks. Sorry. I mean, it really isn't. Um, is it going to take, you know, if, if you've been, I don't think it's going to take two or three years to, re, to get it, your metabolism back to a good place. But if you've been crushing it for your entire life, yeah, you need to give yourself time. I mean, I always say though, don't give yourself, don't have a timeline. If you don't have a timeline, it makes the process so much more enjoyable and gratifying and you know less disappointing because like if you have in your mind like okay i've got to get to this point by three months from now and then you're not there like it's that's very disappointing so yeah having patience being consistent through the process adhering to the program um being willing to play the long game all that is so important we both know that this timeline thing is too important not to keep talking about it's almost like people say, oh, I only have four months to do this. Oh, I only have three months to do this. Like we intrinsically give ourselves this stupid timeline of, oh, we need to have this by this date. Even though we don't feel like we have a timeline, it's, I don't feel like I can do this. I don't feel like I keep, I keep struggling. I keep getting these temptations and all I do is just keep binge eating. And it's just like, the fact that you're saying you don't feel like you can do it is immediately you putting a timeline on yourself because there is literally no way you can fail. All you have is time. Yeah. You literally have is time. Like we have life is life is our longest thing we're going to do, but how are you going to live each of those days? Is it repeating the same cycle or is it actually getting started to move forward in the direction that you want to go? Because if you're already setting out with, despair and failure in mind which doesn't exist like it literally doesn't exist failure is not failure failure is feedback like yeah the that you do yeah you keep it's it's not the failure that gets people down it's the mindset around that failure so if you reframe that failure as okay and you actually sit with it instead of swiping it off like oh my god that's such a failure no like actually sit with that failure I wait. Yeah. <laughs> but just sit with that failure and figure it out and talk to your coach about it. And if you keep failing on the same shit and you don't have a coach, you kind of need to get a coach. Like you really need to get a coach yeah. because yeah. It's the same shit you're failing on. Like, do you really think you can get that through that yourself? Like I have so many clients that still struggle with the same thing. And it's, and it's because they feel like they can't come to me. They need to deal with it on their own. I'm like, I am always here responding to you when you come to me. And I'm sure you're the same. Like that women just want to go through shit themselves and deal with it themselves because that's what society tells us. But you need to be okay to ask for help. Yeah, like, absolutely. Do you come across people that say, oh, well, I'm 45, I'm or I'm 50, or I'm this, and I've already done all this and I already know all the things I, I research. I research, I read this, I, um, I'm trying to not be myself so you can tell that I'm being a different person. I research, I, oh, I've already read all that. I already know all that. Like people, like, yes, we know what we need to do, but so do doctors that are treating us when we go to the GP. They know everything about health, but half of them, more than half of them, are very unhealthy. You can know all the things, but it doesn't mean you're applying them or you know how to apply them for yourself or you even give yourself time to apply them for yourself. And if you're a mother, there's no way that you actually give yourself enough time. So maybe you can talk about that. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. There's so many different topics. Let's talk about like, um, well, yeah, I mean, you have the best plan, the best coach in the world, but if you don't execute, right, it's the plan is dead in the water, right? So a lot of times people think that getting a coach 
automatically uh, guarantees them results, but that's not the case, right? I mean, coaches, the GPS, you are still the driver. Like you, you still have the keys to the car. You're, it's up to you to, to execute. Um, so, I mean, I think there's so much value and, you know, coaches also need coaches, right? I mean, that's when my life changes. When I first reached out to coach, I wasn't a coach at that time. I mean, helping some friends out, but um, that's when my life changed. And understanding the impact and the value of having a coach to be held accountable to, to guide you, to maybe give you the eyes that, that, you know, maybe you're too, you can't see, right? Um, I've had a coach ever since I, since then, I mean, I'm, I'm a coach. And I still have a coach because I understand the value of having a coach. Um, but I also know that if I don't implement the things that my coach asked me to do, like it's not, nothing's going to change. Right. Um, but, um, so let's talk about, uh, mom, like mom guilt. I mean, that's a real thing. So a lot of times moms are like, I can't do this because, you know, I, you know, I'm so busy with the kids Now understanding that, you know, if you prioritize your own health and your own fitness goals, you are actually going to be a better mom, right? A lot of times we feel guilty because it's time spent away from them. This is also where we need to manage our expectations about what we can do. You know, maybe in the beginning, yeah, you're not going to be able to be, be at the gym five days a week for an hour and a half. So maybe you need to find a way to work out from home. I mean, that's my, my, I changed my, the entire, everything the way I, way I did about working out when I had a, a baby. So instead of going to the gym, you know what, I, I trained from home and I was okay with it not being perfect. I was okay with, you know, 30 minutes into the, into my workout, the baby crying and I would have to stop. So, but you just have to find a way to be consistent and be okay with it not being perfect, right? You don't have to be all or nothing. And so that's really tough for a lot of moms to get over that, that mom guilt and um, understanding that putting themselves first is not selfish. It's actually giving, having more available to be able to give back. I want to bring in that timeline to it as well. And it's like, people think that it's either all in or all out, but when you're a mom, there is no way that you can do what you used to do. Yeah. Like when, when you're a mom to a newborn, that is like yeah, when, when right. a newborn's older, you can actually start doing the same things again. Yes. Anything else is yes. just an excuse for you just having mom guilt. Like you can make things possible. It's not going to be the same, same, but it's right. not going to be like the newborn stage. But this timeline thing, it's almost like, yeah, but I need to do it all right now. If I don't do it all right now, then what's the point? It's not worth my investment. It's a waste of money just, just investing in a coach. So I need to make sure that I can do it all now. I'm like, no, you kind of get a coach to tell you what you need to stop doing as well. Like sometimes you're trying to do too much, which is exactly why you were stuck because you keep trying to throw the kitchen sink at it before you've even taken a frigging mug and just sat down with coffee. Like, you, and then- in that same sentence, then there are people that actually start to do the things they need to do to change. Yeah. And I'm gonna I'm gonna give people a little bit of benefit of the doubt. I'll give them I'll give them five weeks, not not two weeks. And then five weeks in, they're like, so coach, when are we gonna start the fat loss phase? Like but, and then if people actually weigh themselves, which I really try to get my girls not to, because I want them to tune into the biofeedback, but if they weigh themselves and then they see it fluctuate a little, just a little, oh my God, <laughs> like, how do you deal with that? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, with this, the scale, oh my gosh, we can take this in a hundred different ways. So, um, you know, with the scale, I don't necessarily think like throwing it away is the answer. Um, and I, there's so much context around this, right? Of course, if you have a you know, history of an eating disorder or things where it's, it's truly detrimental to for your mental health and you're truly better off in that way in your scalp self, or it's truly hindering your progress and it's a huge distraction. But um, I think weighing yourself allows you to understand your, your body fluctuations and how it's totally normal, like totally normal. Meaning like you can be eating the same thing, not changing anything and your weight can still fluctuate up. 
a couple pounds here or there because we all know things like sleep and your digestion and menstrual cycle and training intensity and and you know did you have a lot of carbs sodium you know alcohol all those things have a play understanding that you know it does affect your weight and it's totally normal on that note the reason why I find it so detrimental and just think like it's it's like do you really want to be a slave to what a number on the scale tells you is because a lot of the time like there's these stupid programs out there that put all of your worth on weigh-ins and it's like you can know all the fluctuations and even people that are experienced can know all the fluctuations and you can still let it impact your day whereas if you just focus on all the other metrics of progress and actually stop body checking yourself so much and just leave it to doing a full-on like check-in with yourself like if you're doing the things you need to do to get you to where you want to be you sh- you will be getting the results that you want to get. Yeah. But if you're yeah. constantly ruminating on every little mundane thing in the day to day, it's just it's just taxing, and it is going away on you. Especially if it's just like, but I'm doing all the things, and this scale hasn't moved. Like, I I I don't understand how like we can't just say, hey, look. I went into the future and this is exactly what's going to be the result if you keep doing the things. But I guess it's like, how can you shift the focus? Actually, you did a post on this, so maybe you can like refer to that. Things to help us shift our focus away from trying to be our leanest self in order to actually get to that dream body that we want. Yeah, you mean focusing on like non-aesthetic non-aesthetic wins, you know, like focusing on, yeah, all the good things that's happening, you know, um, strength and performance going up in the gym. Um, you know, maybe you're, you're less food focused, maybe you're, you're, you're sleeping better, your digestion is better, you're happier, um, your clothes are fitting better or differently. Um, you're more pleasant to be around, you know, I mean, I remember my daughter making a comment, like she said, you're actually, you know, not so grumpy and moody and you know that you know when I heard that that really like hurt me I mean not that you know she said that to me but it made me realize how it really does impact those around you and you know when you want to you know think about okay um trying to shift your focus away from being your leanest self you gotta think about like also what kind of legacy do you want to leave behind you know like the people who love you, they're not, they could care less about your size. They're, they, the being your leanest is the least interesting thing about you. You know, think about the things that you love and admire about your friends and family. I mean, aesthetics is the, you know, it doesn't even come on the list at all. Right. So it's a pressure that we put on ourselves. Um, but yeah, and I think it's so important also to, to surround yourself. The environment is very important. So I always talk about, the importance of making sure that people you follow align with your goals. So if you're constantly following people who are dieting all the time, living the, the lean shredded life, that's going to weigh on you, you know? So I, I tell people, you got to be very selective about who you follow and, and be unapologetic about who you decide to unfollow, right? Your mental health is way more important than anything else. And on that note of unfollowing and stuff, it's just like, this is, a, this is a very sensitive topic, but I'm going to say it because it needs to be said. Sometimes you're trying to follow a lot of people that justify where you're at, whether it's the health at every size thing, whether it's body love, which makes you so happy with staying where you are, even though intrinsically you want to change you are creating this fight within yourself because of who you are following. And yes, it's taboo, but I see it a lot. People are following this body confidence movement, even though intrinsically they know that they want to change. It's like, just because you want to change your body does not mean you do not have confidence or you cannot be confident now. Like you both coexist, but who you are following is constantly making you okay with being complacent and staying where you're at. And if you can, like, even with the mental health kind of stuff as well, and I'm speaking on this from experience. So I'm not going to say this one's sensitive because I can relate, but if you're going to constantly follow people who 
of trying to justify why you feel certain ways or trying to justify all these different things. It's just like, yeah, I'm going to share this. This is so true. But it's like, instead of trying to focus on all of this shit that you are right now, why don't you get rid of all of that and start following all of the things that you want to become? Not what mm -hmm. you are right now, not what you are trying to heal from or grow from, but actually where you want to go. And that was what helped change me and change my mindset. And I've seen it with a few other girls as well, very few of the very many, because too many still try to justify where they are at right now because it's comfortable. Right. And it's the same with the way that you're training and you're eating right now. And I'm so glad that I said that because it is really freaking true, isn't it? Like we need to actually start doing the things on all levels if we want to change it because it's got nothing to do with us taking action because it is going to be harder to take that action if what we're constantly seeing on a daily basis is fighting that. Absolutely. Yes. Your environment is extremely powerful. And people, I think, you know, the more you can understand that, the more you're able to change and get out of your comfort zone. Because if you're, I mean, what's what's the saying? Uh, I, I, like the, I can't remember. Um, change happens when the pain of staying the same is greater than the, the, the pain of, what was it? Pain yeah. of <laughs> staying the change. Pain of staying the same is more powerful. Greater than the change. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. And also pretty much when you get tired of your own BS, you know, unfortunately some people have to hit rock bottom before that happens. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, for, for change to happen, you've got to get uncomfortable. Like there's no way around it. Right. I mean, if it were that easy, then we'd be all walking around, um, you know, lean or jacked or whatever the goal is. Um, so yeah. And there's my, my, my dog. <laughs> Might have, might have still asleep downstairs. Oh, like, nice. It, like, th there's another important thing, like finding things that make us happy because if we're going to enjoy the process, it's going to be that much easier to stay in. And now I want to go back to that maintenance thing. Like I said, I wanted to go back to because now it yeah. makes a lot of sense. Like if you heard everything we just spoke about in the last half an hour, you'll realize that there is so much to progress on. There is so much room for growth in maintenance me like this was me this was you according to our conversation we were always trying to chase something and if we weren't trying to get to like if we weren't feeling like we were moving towards something and we use this word maintenance oh but I'm not making progress oh but I'm not getting anywhere but you, you don't realize that maintenance isn't a stuck point like right. you're doing things in there it's not like you die in maintenance it's not like okay you had your before now is your after and now it's maintenance and now you're drop dead like this is what I say about before and afters and I freaking hate it it's like that's not the before there were befores before the before and that's not your after because you still have more afters to get to so yeah. it's not like you were born on that day and you're gonna die on this day like what's gonna happen in between it what happened in between it and what's gonna happen after it and it's the same with the whole maintenance thing it's just like there's shit that happens in between there. And I posted up a photo actually of myself on Facebook and someone commented on it and like, they, they don't know me from a bar of soap. They <laughs> commented on it because I posted it in a group. They don't know me from a bar of soap. And they were like, oh my God, you look really freaking good. And I'm like, I'm still trying, like I'm nowhere near as jacked as I used to be. I'm nowhere near as built as I used to be, but this is point whatever it is along the timeline. I'm just going to say it's point C. Between point A and point B, there was a whole lot of shit that I did in between yeah. there, a whole lot of shit of life. In between point B and C, same thing happened, plus corona, plus this, plus lockdown times two. Like shit happens in between points on the timeline. And if you keep trying to find a straight line that just goes forward instead of looking at it in terms of roller coasters and ins and outs, then you're setting yourself up for disappointment and you can't just keep looking progressively and linear better in the direction of your dreams because it ebbs and it flows. It ebbs yep. and it flows. As long as North is North, mm -hmm. we'll improve still. Like as soon as I start trying to put back on my muscle mass now, I am going to look way better than I ever did because my form is better. 
my mindset is better. I don't hate walking into the gym like I used to because I used to feel like it was a chore. I used to feel like a slave to it. I'm loving the process so much more now. I've grown in the process. I actually have a better relationship with food now. So I'm actually feeding the process. Whereas before I was trying to grow and pretty much really shit gut health, my hormones were tanked and I was on like friggin' 1800 calories. Now I'm on like a thousand more. So it's realizing that it's not just about points along the timeline, but the fact that life happens in between there. And maybe you can speak a lot more on that as well, because it is pretty much the theme of everything you say and do in that there is more to life. There's rest, there's sleep, there's things that enhance your life. Like you're not just a body. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, maintenance, people understand that maintenance is still an amazing goal, right? still it's you can still make progress there people think that it's like you become stagnant there but really that's where a lot of change can actually happen but you also need to not get so focused on physique or aesthetic changes that that you you want to happen right i mean it's part of the process of getting there um so this is where you got to focus on other things that allow you to progress, meaning like, you know, nailing your nutrition and focusing on sleep and recovery and hydration, walking, nailing the basics and continue to be good at that during this time. And um, understanding that, you know, maintenance on you can look totally different than on someone else. And, you know, I hear this so much like, well, how come she can look like that at maintenance? And I look like, like this, right? Well, it's, it's everyone's maintenance looks different, different. And for some people, yeah, they can be a little bit leaner. Other people have to carry more body fat to feel optimal. And this is where, you know, comparison game can be very destructive as well. Uh, but remember this also, maintenance requires effort. People think that all of a sudden they can just kind of, you know, just be so casual. And although there's like, a lot of flexibility and maintenance that's why it's so great it still means you do have to practice moderation you can't be be going all crazy all the time because that's when people get themselves in an unintentional surplus and then they blame maintenance for that but no it's not you still have to maintain habits and routines and your lifestyle so that you are in this place and not be careless and sloppy about it so still be intentional but, you know, enjoying things and then letting go of, um, you know, these, these tight, like rigid expectations on what it's supposed to look like for you, you know, because there's so much comparing about, you know, what it should look like, but what you should look like. You shouldn't look, you should only look like yourself, not anyone else. And, you know, understanding that, you know, if this is your first time truly living at maintenance, it's going to look different than someone who has really not dieted that much and they've lived at maintenance most of their life. So they probably will maybe have more muscle on their frame versus you. You're still kind of trying to find that place. I love that so much because it's not uncommon for people to ask me how I got my legs the way they are. And you can tell that they're literally just starting out either in their first or second year or I say that I'm eating this much food and I'm able to stay this lean. They're like, but how are you able to eat that much food and not get fat? I'm like, honey, I've been doing this for seven years. Like yeah. I've actually been doing this for a while. Why? Stop comparing yourself to other people and start right. realizing this is a long game because you'll never get to where I am if you keep looking for quick fixes and yep. making it worse. Like if you want to get the body that this person has or you want to get even though it's stupid to want that because you can only have your body. But if you want to get a body similar to what someone else has, you need to do what they do. Like you need to see what they are doing on a daily basis, how long it took to get there. And you actually need to get yourself uncomfortable first. Like they didn't diet their way there. They had periods of dieting, but they didn't diet their way there. I've spent the last three years at maintenance and my body has never thanked me more for it now. So now I'm in a better place to do whatever the hell I want to do lose fat, it'll melt off, build muscle. That's a different story. Like it actually requires a lot of effort back to the maintenance thing that you said. Yes. This is a perfect thing to sum it up on with like the importance of building muscle, the importance of how you train, not doing random sessions, 
not changing it up all the time, eating enough for enough time and training for it for enough time to get to build that base that you want to reveal because you need to reveal that body. And if you aren't focusing, like if you aren't putting effort into the maintenance, you'll either blow it out, get fatter and regain the weight back, or you are going to be literally stuck and moot because you're not putting any effort into actually building your body. You're not putting any effort into actually enhancing your body to get to where you want to go. Like we always want, like we're humans. There is no such thing as not wanting to improve ourselves in some way. So there are many things you can do in maintenance that you can't do when you're actively losing fat because fat loss comes with a lot of sacrifices mm-hmm. and it leads, it leaks. I'm going to use the word leaks, not leads. It leaks a lot from other areas of your life. So when you're in maintenance, you have to put effort into maintaining. Like we don't have a weight loss issue. Everybody mm-hmm. can lose weight until they can't. That's where the weight maintenance issue comes in because then people either get it all back and then can't lose it again because they lost that whole bit like they're fatigued from the whole diet thing and they're fatigued from hating on themselves because that shit comes with mental energy and then there's this maintenance place where you actually need to effortly maintain and build in whatever way that looks like to you for you for where you are putting your other focuses so that's a great way to tie this up yeah, yeah. The other thing to remember also is um, people really sabotage their maintenance phases, right? So they do this by going back into a cut, not truly living at maintenance, or they do all these little mini cuts all along the way. Like they, they diet down for like a party or, you know, their a birthday, or like you have all these a million different excuses of why you wanted to go into a cut. Um you know, so really when you live at maintenance, this really does mean you live there, right? You don't just dabble and go back into dieting and then um, under eating or overeating, being careless about it. It still does require effort. But man, you know, um, if you can allow yourself to actually live there long enough to know what it feels like, you will get to a point where actually fat loss loses its appeal. Like people cannot for them, it's such a foreign concept. They can't imagine being in a place where they actually don't want to diet anymore. They're thinking like, what? Like, is that even possible? You, Yes, it is possible, but you have to live at maintenance long enough to get to that place. And many women do not know, um, don't allow themselves to get there to discover that place, right? Doesn't It doesn't mean that, yeah, you're, you're, you're gonna have to let go of being your leanest self. Yeah, maybe you're not, you don't have the, you know, that leanest version of you, but when you feel good about yourself and you're properly fueled and you're sleeping great and you're feeling so good, like it, it really does lose its appeal. And I would love for women to discover that place because once you're there, you know what I'm talking about, right? And um, yeah, it's just, that's, that's, I would love for women to be there. It, that's the most amazing part about putting in the work to build your body and then taking those several fat loss cycles. Like, yes, if you still have fat to lose, of course you don't want to live at maintenance. You want to Mm -hmm. actually go through the fat loss cycles, but that's the point. Like you need to enjoy the period in between before going back into those fat loss cycles for them to be really effective. Like your fat can melt off. Like literally your fat can melt off within weeks. If, you do that first step I mentioned at the start, put yourself in a place to lose fat first. Yeah. Set yourself up to success. Yeah. It really is. So with that, is there anything that you want to finish up on? I'm going to leave your Instagram below so people can get some more. You need muscle and you need to maintain and all these other messages that everybody, like it needs to be said and it needs to be said a lot because it's fighting the whole 12 week body, six week body fixes. It's fighting the whole, let's just do some booty pumps and we're going to get the body of our dreams. So the more that you fill yourself with what we want to become and what we need to believe in all the kind of mental processing that is more important than the physical processing, 
the more we are actually going to move in that direction versus staying stuck dwelling on oh, okay that justifies why i feel the way i am yeah yeah so is there anything else that you want to sum up on i think basically you know you gotta set aside manage your expectations on what you're able to achieve um, and have patience in time. You gotta make time and patience your friends because when you are looking for the quick fix, the shortcuts, the quickest way there, it's actually going to take longer. People don't realize the, the longer way is actually the shorter way because you're doing, the, doing it the right way. So, you know, being patient, um, being consistent, um, giving yourself time to reach your goals and understanding it, it can take years, not just a few weeks and not even a few months, but actually years to reach that goal of yours. And honestly, it is like, there's no end to this process, right? Because you're constantly evolving and wanting to be a better version of yourself, which means there is no timeline. Get rid of your timeline. That's the best way to sum this up. You, the only timeline you're putting on yourself is a timeline to mental friggin' insanity. Yeah, <laughs> literally. So with that, I thank you so much for coming on. It, it, we planned this ages ago. So it's about freaking time. Gosh, I think it was before, like before the holidays, I think like it was crazy. Um, but yeah, finally, I am so glad we had a chance to connect. It's been awesome. It has been. And thank you and your little doggy. Oh, I, have, <laughs> I, I have to, I have to share this photo and tag you in it. But yeah, with all that, I'm going to leave one's, instagram handle below and if you liked this don't forget to share it and tag us and let me know what you gleaned from this podcast because there was literally so much said yeah. that can talk about a lot. <laughs> covered a lot that you may need to listen over to you may need to pause it you may need to play little segments over and over again but this is for everybody not just the person who is in an average place, but this is for someone who is also overweight by like five, 10 kilos because our body's biology works the same way. It's just that one side of the spectrum has this mentality of, I just need to keep cutting, cutting, cutting. And the mm -hmm. other one is just trying to maintain this lean body on unsustainable measures. So right. take from it what you will and I will see you on the next podcast. Thank you, Ruby.